A violent crash in East Bear County leaves a teenager dead. Katrina Weber has the details. And the presidential race still undecided. We are tracking the latest numbers at noon. And after a foggy start, how will the weekend look? We've got some pretty warm temperatures on the way. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. A teenager on her way to school never made it more than just a few feet from her driveway. The Department of Public Safety says she was killed in a crash this morning. It happened just inside the Wilson County line, Highway 87 near Oak Park Road. Katrina Weber reports investigators believe weather was a factor in the crash. What's left of two vehicles shows it was a violent collision. Department of Public Safety investigators say the pickup on its side had a 17 year old driver in it heading to Lavernia High School just after seven this morning. They believe she pulled out of her driveway trying to turn left onto eastbound Highway 87 near Oak Park Road. A westbound car then hit her truck. Among the debris scattered across the road was medical equipment showing paramedics and firefighters tried their best to help. But the 17 year old girl died. The woman in the car was hurt too. She was taken to a hospital by ambulance. You may not be able to tell now, but when this happened, it was tough to see. There was thick fog. Investigators believe that played a role in the crash. Troopers spent hours taking measurements, making sure they didn't miss any details, trying to get a full picture of what happened. Sadly, with the crash happening so close to home for the team, this is an image relatives had to witness. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now to the latest on vote 2020. This noon, still no official winner in the presidential race as votes are still being tallied at this hour right now. Former Vice President Joe Biden in the lead. He has 264 electoral college votes. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump has 214. The president continues to push allegations of voter fraud. However, the Trump administration campaign has not offered any proof. Meanwhile, former Vice President Joe Biden urging his base to remain patient and trust the democratic process. If you count the legal votes, I easily win. I ask everyone to stay calm, all the people to stay calm. The process is working. So far, we know of at least three legal challenges that have been brought forward by the Trump campaign, which were actually tossed out of court. We do know that the Trump administration has won at least one legal battle where the court says vote watchers must be allowed within six feet of Philadelphia vote counting. And the country has its eyes on those states that are still counting the votes. Joe Biden turned a deficit into a lead in Pennsylvania and a similar situation playing out in Georgia as well. Here's a look at the very latest numbers in Pennsylvania. The difference of votes between the two, 12,497. Uh, Trump, uh, this is considered a key state for each presidential candidate. It has six, rather, 20 electoral votes. And overnight in Georgia, the AP reporting former Vice President Joe Biden taking the lead in that state, the difference being 1,516 for votes. Georgia has not voted for a Democratic presidential candidate since Bill Clinton back in 1992. And next up, we have Nevada. The difference between the two candidates right now, 20,137 votes. And the last big one that we have been tracking, Arizona. Now, the difference on paper, 43,779. The AP Associated Press has already called the race for former Vice President Joe Biden, even though no other news organization has done so, including ABC News. Right now, like we said, 43,779 votes differing the two candidates. In North Carolina, President Trump is leading the former Vice President by just under 7,600 votes. The TV station in Charlotte, North Carolina, the ABC affiliate reporting that the state will not likely know the results, the final results of this election until next week. And KSAT.com is still your Vote 2020 headquarters online. We're still tracking the latest there. You can get an up to the minute closer look at the votes being tallied and how individual counties are voting across the country. Just go to our homepage. And in your local news, police still trying to figure out how a car ended up in a 20-foot hole on the city's east side. 
Officers on the scene say construction of crews actually found the wreck this morning on the site. This is near I-10 and Greytown Road. A worker at the scene told us it looked like someone was in the vehicle, got out because there was blood. Now, no driver or passenger was at the scene when the construction crew arrived. A tow truck removed the vehicle from that construction site. Police are looking for a driver who they say hit a woman who was trying to just cross the street. According to officers, the 66 year old victim was walking on a crosswalk near Eisenhower Road in Amber Palm just before 8 o'clock last night. That's when a driver in a Mustang hit her. Police say that the person then backed up and drove around the victim without trying to help her. The woman was taken to the hospital. She has a broken ankle. Officers say that the driver involved now facing failure to stop and render aid charges. And San Antonio police also trying to track down a driver involved in another crash. This one turned deadly. Officers on the scene telling us the victim was trying to cross the intersection of Pecan Valley and Goliad. He was hit. This was just before 11 last night. Police on the scene saying a driver in a dark colored SUV did not stop. Records show the driver pulled into a parking lot to check the damage to his truck, then drove off without trying to help the man who was hit. That man who was hit died on the scene. The driver responsible now facing a charge of failure to stop and render aid, resulting in death. And an investigation underway after a man was shot in the foot on the city's east side. That happened late last night in the 1500 block of Paso Hondo, not too far from East Commerce Street and North Walter Street. Police tell us the victim was walking home when he heard gunshots. Then he saw a driver of a red car speed by him. And that's when officers say someone inside the car shot at the victim. The victim taken to the hospital and is expected to be OK. Police are currently looking for that suspect. All right, we still have a lot more coming up here on the news at noon. We are talking sports. We know sports in all capacities have had to adapt during this pandemic. Big news for the UTSA Rice game that was scheduled for this weekend. Larry joins us with the story. A newly launched local business thriving during the pandemic due to the popularity of their product. After the break, Alicia Barrera explains why more people are searching for house plants hmm. and how a Southtown business is filling that need. Welcome back. Our KSAC community partners want to help you get your flu shot with a series of drive through events this month. One of the events scheduled for tomorrow, 8 a.m. to noon at Dub Ferris Athletic Complex. That's the 8400 block of North Loop 1604 West. Most major insurance plans will be accepted and people without insurance can still get a shot for free. You do need to schedule an appointment to receive a flu shot. We have a link to register right now. Just head to ksaccommunity.com. Today is actually Arbor Day in Texas. National Arbor Day is in April. However, here at the Lone Star State, we have one in the fall since the season can be a good time to plant trees in our state. And in San Antonio, you can celebrate by picking up a free tree tomorrow. The city's Parks and Rec Department is hosting a drive through tree adoption event. It's from 9 in the morning until noon. Just go to the pool parking lot at Elmendorf Lake Park. That's at Shore Drive and Monterey Street. Now, during this pandemic, as people got used to the idea of social distancing, a lot of people tried their hand at new hobbies. One of those hobbies, gardening. If that sounds familiar, then a new business in Southtown might have the perfect plan and the perfect plant just for you. Alicia Barrera explains how this newly sprouted business is thriving. Good afternoon. Well, they can purify air, help you relax, and they look good by your window. Virgin Plant Company started as a mobile nursery selling houseplants out of a cargo truck, but soon they became a favorite and a staple among locals. So much that now they have their own storefront off of the 2300 block of South Presa Street. They offer options for everyone and for every budget. You'll be able to choose from tropicals, cacti, herbs, and even low maintenance options for those that can't seem to keep even the simplest of plants alive. Co-owners Jasmine Garza and Hector Rivera launched their business in the summer and say they attribute a big part of their success to the pandemic and the effects it's had on people's health and their desire to pick up a healthy hobby. Bringing that green inside just kind of lifts your spirit so you could see new growth every day. There's studies that show, you know, the mental health benefits of having plants indoors and around you. Um, it just 
forces us to pause and slow down, you know, to take care of something outside of ourselves, to get off of, you know, social media. Plants range from $2.50 and can go up to about $400 if you want to create a tropical feel with palms at home. And another option Virgin Plant Company offers is their terrarium bar where you can build something like this on your own and to your liking. And this, of course, isn't just popular among adults. The little ones also love it. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Have you uh, picked up the green thumb since this? Uh, you should see my herb garden in the kitchen. No kidding. Yeah. What's the, the go-to? Oh, I've got to have basil. Okay. But you know, I'm growing I, lettuce even in my kitchen. Good for you. I try, I fail. You know what? Speaking of gardening, not much sun out there for your garden. <laughs> so fancy, Ursula. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the, the sun's trying to pop out. We had quite a bit of fog this morning. It is uh, slowly dissipating. We're going to see some sun this afternoon. The aquifer, though, down. Fort says to foot to 658.7. This number just keeps dropping. As we keep saying every day, we need some rain. Molds in a low category. It's at 200. No big issues there. A little bit uh, more fog and a forecast down the line. But a, a good weekend, too. We're going to talk more about that forecast coming up. It is 1216 and it is Friday. What do you guys have planned for the weekend? Oh my gosh. I think I'm just going to put my feet up and relax. Relax. Yeah. Oh, has it been a stressful week? A little bit. <laughs> what about you, Jeff? Yeah, it kind of hurts a little bit. <laughs> I, uh, there's going to be some college football. Oh yeah. Mm. For sure tomorrow. That's my plan. Uh, and, there's, and I think the Breeders' Cup um, sprint race is tomorrow. Oh, well. okay. So I Did not know that, but too. sounds exciting. <laughs> Here you go. Uh, it, it, listen, the weekend's going to be great, guys. If, if you want to go outside, uh, the weather's going to cooperate. Normally, we'd be very excited about this stretch of weather. Uh, it's been beautiful. The, the, the one problem, as we keep saying every day, we sound like a broken record here, the rain's just not there. Uh, we did get a little bit of fog this morning. Look at this time lapse. Clear, boom, right there at 7 o'clock. The fog just comes right at you. Uh, and we saw visibilities go way down. Stuck around for a while. Flash forward here. Fast forward all the way to now. And you see the, the, the cloud base has lifted and we're starting to see some breaks in those clouds. Blue sky is starting to show and that's going to allow those temperatures to jump up. Uh, there's a look at the satellite picture and you can see the clouds really starting to break up here. So we're at 70, which is a little bit cooler than we've seen last few days at this time because we've had the clouds. Uh, but you can expect temperatures to jump up pretty quickly today. 75 degrees New Braunfels, 75 Seguin, 74 right now in Hondo, 77 in Castroville and uh, 80 down there in Catula, 79 right now in Del Rio. Uh, dew points on their way up. We're seeing 60s in a lot of spots. We know the humidity is increasing some. Now I think this number goes down a little bit this afternoon and down a little bit more tomorrow. We can see that on the dew point tracker. Drier air allows those dew points in the mid 50s tomorrow. It'll feel okay. Uh, you won't really notice the humidity that much. Now Sunday and Monday you probably will. It increases. We may get some more cloud cover, some more fog on Sunday and, and Monday morning too. We talked about the dry streak. This is sort of an impressive number to me. Last time we received a tenth of an inch or more, you got to go all the way back to September 21st. Now, this is at San Antonio International Airport. That was 45 days ago. We're really hurting for some rain. And our hope was that this next system would at least give us some showers, maybe a thunderstorm. And it's still possible. It's just the rain chances are not that great. A lot of the energy is going to be off to our north. And you look at the water vapor right now, look at all the dry air in the mid levels of the atmosphere that are uh, that's sitting across Texas. That's certainly not going to allow us to get any rain, even with an upper level low spinning just off to our east. You'll notice that we are rain free. There are clouds, but no rain here across the state of Texas. A lot of unsettled weather out west, and this is the system that will bring us at least a small chance for some showers and storms next week. So let's jump into the forecast here. That upper level low moves away. We get the clouds. This is Sunday morning, so fog, low clouds, maybe some drizzle. And then uh, we'll do that again Monday morning, too. And then the front comes in. With that front, there'll be a thin line of showers. Certainly can't rule out a, a sprinkle or two, maybe a light shower here around San Antonio. But the better chance of rain is going to be to our north. And then by Wednesday, it clears out some behind that front. Tropical update. We still do have a tropical depression, Ada. Uh, boy, it, it caused a lot of issues in Central America. We know that a lot of rain. It's now back out over the open Caribbean and it doesn't look great right now. Winds are at 35 miles per hour, but there should be some restrengthening here, some organization. And by Saturday evening, we're expecting a tropical storm. This could affect the Florida Keys, Southern Florida. 
bring some very heavy rain there, staying a tropical storm. And that looks like this may try to work up towards the panhandle of Florida. We'll have to watch it, but it really is not expected to affect our weather in any way. 77 by 2 o'clock today, up around 80 for a high. Winds will be light south 5 to 10 miles per hour. 82 tomorrow, 82 Sunday, 83 on Monday. There's that 10% chance of rain. Of course, that's some for Veterans Day, and then maybe another chance on Thursday of next week, guys. Good to have something yes. to look forward to. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Justin. Another thing to look forward to, actually, the NBA officially coming back. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, the regular season, the bubble season, just bubble wrapped season. up three <laughs> yeah. and a half weeks ago or so, and now it looks like the NBA's regular season for the new season is going to start on December 22nd. We got the details coming up, and Packers wide receiver Devontae Adams says he is the best wideout in the game coming up. Last night, the National Basketball Players Association Board of Representatives voted to approve a plan to start the new season on December 22nd. This is just one part of the process with other matters to be determined, but the NBPA said it is confident that the Players Association and the NBA will reach agreement on these remaining issues relevant to the upcoming season. The NBA wants a December 22nd start for the perceived financial benefits for the league and players feeling it's worth between $500 million and $1 billion in short and long-term revenues for both sides. So here's a few highlights of the tentative. December 22nd start a reduced 72 game schedule with televised Christmas Day games. Training camps will begin December 1st and the season would finish before the Summer Olympics in July. Now, if this holds true, then we are set 47 days away from the new NBA season. UTSA football will not face Rice tomorrow afternoon in Houston. The game was postponed today due to coronavirus related issues within the Roadrunner program. The two schools will work in conjunction with Conference USA for rescheduling options. UTSA is 4-4 four four on the season, 2-2 two two in Conference USA. And after eight straight weeks of game action, the Roadrunners will now have a bye week. Here's what the UTSA Vice President for Intercollegiate Athletics, Lisa Campo, said through a statement, quote, We are certainly disappointed that we have had to make the difficult decision to postpone Saturday's game with Rice. Throughout the pandemic, our top priority has been and will continue to be the health and safety of our student-athletes, coaches, staff, and community. We are extremely grateful to the leadership at Rice University and Conference USA for maintaining an open and understanding line of communication and we look forward to being able to return to competition safely end quote Wyoming at Colorado State last night aka the border war dating back to 1899 first quarter Marshawn Cameron intercepts Levi Williams and he takes it back 30 yards and the Rams take the lead for good seven to nothing Levi passed for 321 yards with one INT now the Smithson Valley alum would find the end zone late in the fourth quarter. Third and one, Levi goes up the middle, bounces off the pile and outside for a three-yard touchdown run. Pretty sweet, but the Rams take it 34-24, snapping a four-game slide to the Cowboys. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Packers at the Niners last night, kicking off week nine in the NFL and Green Bay wide receiver Devontae Adams had a game. He hauled in 10 catches for 173 yards and a touchdown. Aaron Rodgers passed for 305 yards and four TD passes. Packers win 34-17. Adams leads the NFL with eight touchdown receptions. But do you think you're at the point where you can say you're the best wide receiver in the NFL? Do you think that's fair to say? Uh, yeah, I think that's fair to say. I think that's not uh, that's not being conceded. That's just being confident. I think um, what I'm going to continue to do is going to prove that um, to anybody who, who isn't on board with that. Leads the NFL in touchdown receptions, number five in receiving yards. He's got a pretty good argument. Got a point. <laughs> All right, Larry. It's been a week of controversy. Here's one for you. Do you think he's the best uh, receiver in the league? I think he's arguably okay. the best. <laughs> He's been at this a long time, There's some Max. pretty good ones. You're not going to get him. <laughs> good try, Max. I do what I can. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> All right. Researchers have been studying hospitalized COVID-19 patients, trying to learn more about this virus, why they're now keeping an eye on people even after they leave the hospital. That's coming up in our next half hour. Also, coronavirus cases as they rise in several states. Doctors are urging people to be more careful, and not just in public. We'll explain.
We begin this half hour with the latest job numbers here in the United States. Employers across the country slowing down their hiring in October for a fourth straight month. Economists have forecast that employers added 580,000 jobs last month, down from 1.5 million in August. If correct, this would mean last month's gains were the weakest since employers began calling some of their employees back to work in May. The economy has regained only about 12 million of the 22 million jobs since the pandemic began. And speaking of the pandemic here at home in Bear County, we have a drop in our seven day average of new cases falling by just one. We are now at an average of 212 cases. Three more people died. 195 cases were reported just yesterday. And while we do have 259 COVID-19 patients in the hospital, Mayor Ron Nuremberg says the number includes 42 patients who are from El Paso, which is dealing with overwhelmed hospitals over there. Of the total hospitalizations here, 111 are in the intensive care unit and 56 are on ventilators. And across the country, infections rising to record highs in several states as the United States reported more than 100,000 new cases in a single day for the first time. Daily new confirmed cases in the U.S. surging 45% over just the last two weeks. All of this according to the latest data compiled by Johns Hopkins University. Deaths also on the rise, up 15% to an average of 846 deaths every day. The total United States death toll now at more than 232,000 people and total confirmed U.S. cases surpassing 9 million. Some states like Massachusetts now increasing restrictions trying to slow down the spread. Doctors in that state say the current total case count in Massachusetts will grow significantly in the winter. Now they're urging people to be more careful and not just in public places. Most transmissions now are occurring in the home. So it's not just about wearing masks in public, which of course we need to be, but it's also back in our home. And across the South and the Midwest, hospitals scrambling, trying to accommodate the new surge of patients. In some cases, actually pausing elective surgeries or transferring patients out of their state. In-person classes in South Korea will be suspended at 76 schools nationwide there, according to South Korea's education ministry. It's because students and teachers are testing positive for COVID-19 in several provinces. Korea's Disease Control Prevention Agency announcing 145 new virus cases on Friday. The country has reported more than 100 daily virus cases for the past three days. Now, long term effects of COVID-19 still remains a mystery, but scientists are working to learn more. As Stephanie Cerner reports, some researchers are now keeping a close eye on patients even after they leave the hospital. A study from the European Respiratory Society has shed some insight into the long-term effects of COVID-19 infection. Researchers found that two-thirds of patients still had at least one symptom at six weeks after leaving the hospital. Despite these lingering issues, the patients showed improvement when checked again at 12 weeks. Researchers also found that joining a structured rehabilitation program sped up recovery. Keep in mind, this only applied to the most serious cases requiring hospitalization. The study is still ongoing, and scientists are hopeful that improvements will continue when patients are checked again at 24 weeks. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. More than 50 people are presumed dead in Guatemala this afternoon following landslides and flooding that were caused by Tropical Depression ETA. The president of Guatemala says at least 25 homes were buried in the central area of San Cristobal. Rescue crews are en route now to an area on foot because roads have been destroyed by the severe rains. The storm is projected to be headed toward Cuba today and then on to U.S coastline. All right, well, back here at home, it's 70 degrees. The way I described today, uh, kind of a stay at home, stay under the covers, don't do anything. I woke up, it was foggy, there was overcast. It was like a lazy Friday. But look how pretty it is out there now. <laughs> Better uh, get it, out there. It is uh. nice. Uh, if you slept in and now maybe you're just waking up. Uh, there you it, go. It's gotten a lot better. Yeah, we had some fog this morning. Visibility was way down in a lot of spots. We had a dense fog advisory for a time. 
uh, but we've seen the, the fog lift, the clouds are starting to kind of scatter out, and that's resulting in warmer temperatures. Uh, right now, 70 degrees at the airport, 70 in Boulevardy, 69 Canyon Lake, 72 out there in Tarpley. And by the way, out at Las Maples, leaves are starting to change. you got to make reservations, though, if you're heading out that way. It's that time of year. It's really pretty out there. Visible satellite picture shows uh, we still have quite a bit of cloud cover stretching from, say, Sabinal all the way over to some of our eastern counties. Gonzales still seeing partly to mostly cloudy skies. But what you'll see as we go throughout the course of the day is that these clouds will scatter out even more. We'll see a little bit more sun and temperatures should still rise close to where we were, we've been last couple of days near 80 degrees. Still no rain across the state of Texas. You'll find cloud cover, but those clouds aren't producing anything. 72 Dallas, 72 Wichita Falls, 74 right now out in Marfa. It's pretty uniform across the state with a little bit warmer numbers down south. Uh, the forecast for today, 80 degrees are high temperature, then 74 by 6 o'clock. Sunsets around 544, then down to 72 by 8 o'clock. Southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Guys. Thank you so much, Justin. All right. Well, it has been a tough year for our Texas teams, to say the least. The Cowboys have been, yeah. And the <laughs> Texans now dealing with some players out. Three linebackers actually out for this weekend. Larry's going to join us with your full preview. It's rare that Max has nothing to say. Well, I mean, look, it's just, it, what is it, Murphy's Law? Anything that can go wrong will. Has. The Cowboys. Yeah. yeah. iPhone users getting back in the game after feeling left out. How they may be able to play Fortnite again. Hello, everyone. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar iPhone users may soon be able to play Fortnite once again, but with a minor change. According to the BBC, Fortnite may return to iPhones via NVIDIA's cloud gaming service. That announcement is expected before the holiday season. Now, rather than a standalone app, the game will run inside the Safari browser due to Apple's app restrictions. Meanwhile, Bentley is planning to go fully electric by 2030. The plan, which the luxury automaker is calling Beyond 100, is already in the works with the automaker Maker, confirming that two plug-in hybrid models are going to come out next year. The company's first all-electric vehicle will come to market in 2025. This new plan comes as other automakers are doubling down on electric vehicles. And with just 50 days left until Christmas, Starbucks is getting in the holiday spirit. The coffee giant debuting their newest holiday cups, which are going to be available starting today. This year's theme is Carry the Merry. In a press release, Starbucks says people carrying the cups will serve as messengers of joy. Consumers can snag a free reusable holiday cup with any purchase of Starbucks' seasonal drinks. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. All right, three iconic toys adding into the Toy Hall of Fame. Yes, that's a thing. The Strong National Museum of Play announced the 12 toy finalists back in September. So take a look. We now have the top three that are going to be inducted. First, Baby Nancy, the first black doll to have an afro and dark skin. The doll launched nationwide 1968. And then we have a fan favorite. We have Sidewalk Chalk. I, does that constitute a toy? That's a toy. Okay. All right. Calm Octave down. Justin's wow. You're very, very defensive. defensive. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So great masterpieces have been created on sidewalks all over the world because of sidewalk chalk. And last but not least, Jenga. I learned a fun fact writing this story. The wooden block game created in Ghana. Shout out to Ghana in the 1970s. Fun fact, the record for the highest known Jenga tower, 40 Wow. Complete stories high. How, all right. how so many I boxes? Just, yeah. I just, <laughs> how many boxes does that take? I assume both of you guys have played Jenga at one yes. point. Mm -hmm. What is the highest you've ever gotten? It? Oh, I'm the worst player ever. Yeah, I, I don't have the steady hands. Yeah. Not a surgeon. No. Never going to be a surgeon <laughs> over here either. Listen, I know we shouldn't be talking about stress right now, but it kind of stresses me out to play Jenga. Like, there's just a lot happening. And <laughs> <laughs> Too much pressure. There's a lot of pressure. <laughs> All right, say. taking a live look out at the Alamo City. 70 degrees out there. Not much it's pressure pretty. going on. Yeah. Yeah, the, the clouds are always starting to clear out, guys. It, it is going to turn into another nice day. If you got Friday night football plans tonight, looks really good. 70 so far today. 55 was the low this morning. And the records are 91 and 32. We did get down to freezing back in 1970. But as we look down the line here in our seven day forecast, there's no big cold front that's going to really turn down the temperatures, but maybe a little bit of rain next week. We'll talk more about it coming up.
Welcome back. It is almost time for Friday Night Football. Let's get you set for some of the games. Weather-wise, doesn't get much better than this. Temperatures will be at 77 kickoff, around 66 by halftime. Maybe actually a little bit cooler there at kickoff, but nonetheless, nice. Um, we'll see that sunset around 543. Really a good night for some football. Let's look at the average temperatures for this time of year. We average about 76 degrees. We're really on the downside here, so you would expect temperatures to keep coming down. Now, these are just the averages. But we just haven't seen big shots of cold air here in South Texas. We've had a couple. We had a, a, a really good one, obviously, a couple weeks ago. But nothing that's really dragging these temperatures down. We've been at about 80 degrees every day, so we've been above average. And it looks like we'll sort of continue that trend right on into next week. Outside right now, partly cloudy skies. It is 70 at the airport, but we've bumped it up to 74 now. It's dense in 73 at Kelly. And just a light southerly breeze at this hour. You see the cloud cover. It, there is more of it than we've seen last couple days, and the fog was a little thicker this morning. Good increase in moisture, and that's why, at least at the lower levels, that we're seeing some of this. Uh, these clouds will continue to sort of scatter out. We'll see more blue skies as the day continues, and that should still get our temperatures up near 80, despite the sort of slower start uh, to the temperature rise today. 75 degrees in New Braunfels right now. 75 comfort. We're at 72 out there in Lost Maples. Some 80s on the map down around Catula and Laredo. Corpus are usual hot spots. Uh, we showed you the satellite picture there with the temperatures. And, and the dew point tracker shows that we'll see uh, dew points drop off a little bit as we get into tomorrow, into the mid-50s. And then they pop back up Sunday and Monday. And with the deeper moisture coming in Sunday, I think we'll see a little bit more fog and cloud cover to start. That'll be the case Monday, too, before our next front arrives. We mentioned that there's a lot of moisture at the surface, but not really in the mid levels of the atmosphere. And that's what water vapor sees. Uh, we can see the little twist right here. That's our upper level low. And when you see this sort of orange and red color, that basically tells us that things are pretty stable. You're not going to get anything really to develop. Uh, so no rain right now. We are watching this big upper level low out west. That's going to throw some energy towards us, but most of it's going to be deflected to the north. We'll get a frontal boundary in here on Tuesday, and that'll be enough to maybe generate a shower or two but nothing that's going to uh, cut into our drought at all. And you see the big picture here across the country. All, all the rain is out west right now uh, and some snow in the higher elevation. So our forecast shows that uh, we'll see quiet conditions tomorrow, Sunday, just some clouds, maybe a little bit of drizzle, but no rain. Monday, same story. And then with the front, there will be a thin line of showers. Looks like right now it'll be fairly early in the day that that front comes through. It will cool us down some for Veterans Day, but not much. We're thinking upper 70s for highs. Forecast for today, 77 by 2 o'clock. 80 your high temperature and look for again a light southerly breeze 82 tomorrow 82 on Sunday 83 Monday a little cooler Tuesday's front comes through and then maybe some upper 70s next week there is another outside chance of a shower on Thursday guys thank you Justin thank you Justin all right so how did I describe the Cowboys they've been you went um yeah yeah, been, yeah. well <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. I don't think Ben DiNucci is the answer but you say there could be someone else next in line. Yeah, Coach McCarthy wants to go with the guy who has more experience. Well, Garrett Gilbert or, or Cooper Rush don't really have that much more game experience in the league, but they've certainly been around longer. So coming up, who's it going to be? And Taft Volleyball chasing the playoffs. And, man, they're getting so close coming up.